In this video I'm going to build a circuit that can drive an 8x8 two color dot matrix display. I'm going to use three 74HC595 serial to parallel converters and I'm also going to use an Arduino as the source of serial data. In this video I'm using a common anode dot matrix display so please check that yours is the same before you wire it exactly as I have done in the circuit. There are some previous videos on the 74HC595 under serial to parallel converters and also there is an introduction to dot matrix displays so please watch them first before watching the rest of this video. In this case I'm going to demonstrate that there's problems with the current levels in the circuit and that we're going to need to have a current source or current sink. Because my display is a common anode display I'm going to use a current source but if you have a common cathode display you will need to have a current sink. So here's my first circuit implementation. I'm only going to drive one color in the display and I'm going to do that by providing a set of resistors to drive a current through the individual rows of the display. The display itself is made up of eight rows and eight columns, so what looks like 64 LEDs. Pin one is on bottom left hand side of the data sheet and you can see here that, well on the outside, it's, it's the pin to the left of the text. Down below we see the array itself. It's made up of red LEDs and green LEDs. So in actual fact we have 128 LEDs in this array. Each one of the rows is connected to the anode side of all of the LEDs on that row so we can say that this particular configuration is common anode configuration. Down below we see the operating parameters for our, our, our display and you can see that we have for example a typical forward voltage level and uh, which is different for the red and green values and a maximum forward voltage which is again different so we can use different resistor values later on to drive um, to get the maximum voltage in each also take note of the fact that 20 milliamps is the maximum forward current that we're allowed to have so our circuit itself if we look at the wiring we can see that the two 748C595s are on the top of the circuit and you'll see that we have a common clock but we have an individual row and latch uh, connection for, for the rows and the columns and this is my initial configuration I'm going to improve on that later. The source resistors drive the current through the rows and then we sync the current through the second through the green column 74HC595 on the top. In this particular configuration I've got the rows are driven through the yellow wires here and the columns come out through the grey wires and these are connected to the right 74HC595. So the display itself, how do we address an individual LED? Well the way we do it is by turning on the current in effect by setting the potential difference to be plus 5 on the row and 0 on the column and that allows us to direct a current from a particular row. We only turn on one row at a time and then we sync that to the individual columns that are set to have a potential of 0 volts. Now in this case it means that in this example because we're lighting two LEDs on each row it means that we're sinking half the current in each column. So the full current whatever that is to be comes in on the row and sinks to each of the columns. So here's my full configuration. You do notice there's a tiny flicker but that's only because of the way it's been captured on the camera. So we have to write a set of code to describe uh, how we turn on the rows and columns. So here's Here's my code example. You can see I've identified the individual uh, pins for the Arduino for the rows and columns. I've also got my data set that makes up the X that we place on the display. We have to set all our pins to be output pins and my loop function simply loops around the same values over and over again. My loop, the, the display function just simply loops around each one of the columns and turns on the LED, turns off the LED for that particular point to look and use persistence of vision to make it look like we are able to display multiple values on the screen at the same time. The flicker is as a result of that but as I said you can't really see that with the naked eye it's just been picked up by the camera. I was able to update this circuit to add in a third 74HC595 for the red column so now I've got one for the rows and then two one for each of the columns the red and the green columns. The problem with this circuit though is that I'm still driving the current through the resistors which are connected to the rows and we will get an uneven illumination depending on how many LEDs are lit on a particular row. We only light one row at a time but we light multiple columns at the same time. The other problem with this is we could potentially pull a very large current 
through the row and possibly damage the 74HC595 on the row. This is the final circuit implementation for our 8x8 uh, dot matrix display with two colors. Uh, this implementation takes care of the high current issues that we saw previously and discussed previously and also takes care of the constant illumination across the display no matter how many columns are lit at the same time on each row. Straight away you'll see that I've made a few modifications. There's an extra IC that I'll talk about in a second but also you'll notice that I've moved the resistors from the row side of the display onto the columns. So since there's 16 columns, we now need 16 resistors, and I'm using 150 ohm resistors in this particular case, uh, rather than the 8 that we had before. Now, the extra IC that I introduce is the UDN uh, 2981A. It's a constant current source, and you can see it's made up of a transistor array, 8 transistors. So it's an 18-pin DIP package, and has the 8 transistors and we also have to provide it with our VS, our source voltage, which in this case is our 5 volt supply, and we also have to connect it to ground. It's particularly useful for connecting high current devices to, thing, to uh, equipment like the Arduino, where we can't possibly drive high currents through the pins. As well as that, you'll see I've added in a couple of some decoupling capacitors just to keep it neat, and I've also changed the wiring at the top of the circuit. And you can see that in this diagram that I've changed it quite considerably. The clock pin is still connected to all of the uh, 74HC595s, but you'll notice that there's only one single latch pin for all the serial to parallel converters, and there's also only one serial data line coming from the Arduino connected to the first 74HC595. What you will notice, though, is on the first 74HC595, there's a QH prime value. You see the brown output, which is on the top right of the IC, and that goes into the serial input of the next IC, and similarly on the next IC. And what this allows us to do, we'll look at the code in a few minutes, is to effect push right across our full 24 bits in one latch, uh, um, going from low to high on one latch call. So the way we do this is, if you remember the way that the serial to parallel converter works, is that the 8-bit shift register is loaded, and then we apply the storage register clock input to clock this through to the outputs. Now, if you can imagine having three of these registers connected side by side, we can push in 24 bits of data, 3 times 8, and then apply one storage register clock input to store the value in the three latches at the same time. One thing worth noting about this circuit configuration is that the UDN 2981A on the bottom left hand corner is upside down. So you can see here on the circuit diagram that the top right hand corner represents pin 1. The reason for this is that it just allows for a much neater wiring configuration where the white wires are the inputs and the yellow wires are the outputs to the individual rows of the 8x8 display. So on to the code itself and this is the code that we place on the Arduino to drive the display and, and create the animation effect on the LEDs. So the first thing we can see is that we're using one single data output pin, which is different than the circuit that I showed, the code I showed you before. You also see we, can, we define 8x8 array, and we set up our data pin, clock pin, latch pin on pins 8, 9, and 10. So we're only using three wires from the Arduino to drive this, individual, this display. The way that I've set up the data is to use a row column matrix where the columns represent values, the 2 to the n values, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and we just define a single integral value between 0 and 255 for each row. So row 1 in this case has a value of 3, which is 1 plus 2. And that allows us to, to populate a data set quite efficiently, and in this case here we've got 13 different symbols that we're going to use for animation for each of the red and green data set. We set up the clock pin, data pin, and latch pin as output pins, and then we go into our loop function, which is where we just loop over and over again to display each symbol a certain number of times. In this case, I've defined it 20 times. The animation goes through all 12 of the data set values and goes back to the start then. The display fix pixels function takes the value that we want to display and the delay how many times we want to display it, and what it does is it loops through each row loads in the data set value, the current value from the data set, and then shifts out the red value, the green value, and the row value to the 595s. You'll notice that we have to 
take the red green values away from 255 and that's because in effect to get the pixel lit we have to set that individual column low uh, that creates the potential difference and allows the current to flow so after we've set the three values of 24 bits into the three registers we write the latch pin high and then we write it low and this loads the value to the output we delay for a certain amount of time and then we clear the value in each one of those um, uh, rows again and this stops bleeding uh, in the display if you don't do this you'll get a kind of a blurring effect in the display now we want to check that we're meeting the current constraints of the devices in the circuit so here I've connected the oscilloscope to the UDN 2981A in this case here the red plot is the row 1 output of the UDN 2981A and the yellow plot is the row 5 output and you can see from this plot that in effect each one of the outputs is only on for one eighth of the total time and we can say it has a duty cycle of twelve and a half percent so if we look at the data sheet we can see well in this case here we have a plot of allowable peak current against duty cycle so in this case here if we had a duty cycle of a hundred percent and we had all eight outputs turned on at the same time we would only be allowed around hundred and twenty milliamps in this case here because we have all eight outputs in use but we have a duty cycle of only 12.5%, we can pretty much use the maximum recommended current, up to 350 milliamps. The problem with that is that we're not necessarily able to drive that through the Arduino. Now we need to check the current that we're drawing through the UDN 2981A. So to do this, I've broken the VSS to VCC connection of my, of my supply of my uh, current source, and I'm measuring the total current being drawn by the IC. So here you can see that we're drawing 5.3 milliamps. And this is coming about because we're lighting just a single LED on the column. And remember, we're only checking one row at a time. If we were to change this circuit so that we light only every second row, well, you see that the average current that we're drawing is now down to 2.9 milliamps. So that just gives an indication of the averaging effect that we're seeing here. If we light the red and green column at the same time, so in effect we're lighting two LEDs on each row, you see we get 10.6 milliamps current being drawn, which is twice the value we saw before for a single LED on the row. Now if we light them all, so we light all of the green LEDs on a single row, you can see we're now up to 31.6 milliamps, which is very close to the 35 milliamp limit that we would have if we didn't have this IC. If we light the two colours, the red and green at the same time, we get the orange appearance, we see we're well over the limit that we have for an individual pin of a 74HC595. And therefore it explains why we need to have this UDN IC present in our circuit. We also want to check the current that we're sinking through the remaining 74HC595s. So there's one 595 on the left for the green columns and one 595 on the right for the red columns. And you can see here is the 16 resistors, one for each of the columns. So in this case here I've disconnected the last resistor that's running into the red 595 and that's connected to the last column of the display. So you see here that I've isolated on its own. So this allows us then to measure the current that we're sinking through that individual pin. And you can see it's 4.4 milliamps, so we're well under specification. This display allows us to drive 20 milliamps through each individual segment. So as a result, I'm able to reduce that resistor value. And here I've reduced it down considerably. I've reduced it down to a, a 75 ohm resistor and, and below. And I'm now getting 16.5 milliamps sinking through that individual pin. And you can see in this case now that the last column, when we're just displaying red, uh, a red display, you can see that the last column is significantly brighter than the, the other columns. And this is because, well, I'm not driving this display to its full potential. So by reducing the size of the resistors on the sink side, we're able to increase the current that we're, we're driving through the display. So this is my final circuit implementation and you can see it drives the display quite smoothly. The only other thing I've added to this circuit is small decoupling capacitors to the inputs or to the supply pins of each of the ICs. This is good practice because the capacitors can respond quickly to changing current demands by the IC and this allows for smooth operation of our circuit overall.
The overall benefits of this circuit are that, well, it's only using three lines from the Arduino. Well, it is using the power as well, but it's been driven by the clock line, data line and latch lines that are being supplied from the Arduino. The other advantage is that the UDN2981A current source allows the circuit to drive even larger dot matrix displays, and by large I mean higher current dot matrix displays, without damaging the 748C595s, which have a maximum current level on each pin of about 35 milliamps. A PC can supply quite a large current to the Arduino, but the Arduino has circuitry built in to prevent overcurrent uh, an overcurrent supply condition arising. So it's limited to about 500 milliamps from your PC supply. If we were to drive every single column at the maximum intensity, well, we, we went as far as 16 milliamps in the display, we would need 256 milliamps for each individual row. That's eight times two colors times 16 milliamps. So 16 times 16 is 256 milliamps. If we were to drive it to the maximum level specified in the in the dot matrix data sheet, you would see we could have 20 milliamps per LED, so that would require 320 milliamps per row. Now we only ever light one individual row at a, a single time, and that's very important in this circuit. It's human persistence of vision that makes it look like we have all the rows lit at the same time. One thing we could do to tidy up this circuit would be to use something like a resistor network. You can buy a small package in DIP form that looks like a normal IC and has eight resistors side by side. If you were manufacturing this display, you could use an SMT uh, resistor network, which are very, very neat. Finally, just one thing to remember again. This is a common anode dot matrix display. If your display is a common cathode display, you will need to reconfigure the circuit. You will probably need a current sink on the columns and for this you can probably best use the ULN 2803A.